Rub up your engines! Well, if you ordered a Ford Bronco, you're probably mad because you haven't gotten this thing yet. I got Brimmy one the other day. He waited like 16 months to get it. Well, now they say that the 2023 Ford Bronco production is all messed up because they're gearing up to make the 2024 New Ranger, and they're made in the same factory. Sounds to me like Ford really doesn't have their act together. They can't even plan it out to build one and then the other. Oh, we'll build them in the same. Okay, oh, we'll just shut down production of this one. We don't care. They obviously are a mismanaged company. There's no arguing that. They're talking about, they said they're going to do it better. Maybe they need to fire all their management and start over from scratch because the ones they have seem to be a bunch of idiots that don't know what they're doing. Even GM just passed them in electric vehicle sales and they're trying to brag about electric sales. Hey, Ford was selling electric cars at a pace higher than GM and now GM's zoomed right by them because Ford's just not organized. And one of their popular models, the Everglade Bronco, they're not even making. And they're saying, well, hopefully when we clear all this up and get the 2024 Rangers all set up and making, we'll go back to making the Everglades. You can't even order Everglades on their website now. They took it off because you know people are so mad they got to wait so long. They're not even letting them order now. So really, Ford is a mishmash of mess. They really need to just reorganize that whole company. No wonder their stock is down the toilet. People that look at money, look at them like, these guys are an unorganized mess. They're having recalls, problems up the wazoo. They're getting cars recalled and trucks all over the place. So Ford really needs to start straightening things up, and it doesn't look like they're doing a very good job at it. Seems to me they're getting worse. Now, be careful what you buy on Craigslist, because one guy thought he was getting a great deal. He was buying a Dodge Challenger Hellcat for only $26,000. The problem was it was stolen from a rental company. <laughs> The guy had painted stuff different colors, right? He sold it to a guy for 26 grand, but it was a stolen car. Now, I'm telling you, you ever buying cars, you got to see that title, not a picture of it on your phone, an actual title, you know, that you can look at it, make sure they own it. They've got clearance on it. Now, this guy in Los Angeles, you know, would be in Los Angeles, saw it, and he met the guy, and he talked him down to 26 grand to buy this Hellcat. But little did he know, the guy he was buying it from had merely rented it from a company. Well, the rental company was tracking it through. Through GPS and they found the thing and they were led to its new owner Lee who of course had to give it to the police. The guy had painted it different colors. He had dipped the wheels in rubber coating so it looked different. So poor Mr. Lee got duped. Hopefully they catch the guy who did it. Well the guy was kind of foolish because he'd rented the car from a company and they had all his paperwork. I mean the guy was an idiot trying something like that. I mean, there's some stupid people out there. One buying one without looking at the title and two the guy rents it and then sells it as a stolen car. I could see if the guy had stolen the car and then tried something, but he rented the car. He's the paperwork trailer, right? There's some crazy people out there. You never know what they can do. So if you're buying a used car, make sure it's an honest deal. Don't call somebody and say, oh, we'll meet in the Denny's parking lot and cut a deal. No, go to their house or whatever, someplace that's real, not, oh, we'll meet in the metal. I had one a few months ago. We we're going to meet a guy in Nashville. We get there and it was like in a Denny's parking lot, right? And we look, I looked at the truck, put it in my scan tool. The thing was a rolling pile of junk. And the guy said, oh, well, this is my uncle's car. It's not mine. And then we looked, they had completely different names. And then you found out that indeed the guy actually worked for a used car scammer who had bought the car in Alabama, then brought it to Tennessee to try to pretend it was somebody's uncle car. And it was a horrible car and all kinds of problems. So we didn't buy it, but you got to see the title and the name. And if nothing matches, run away. Don't even think about buying. Well, I warned people about buying the new Tundras because they went from the V8 to a twin turbo V6. Well, Here's an email from one of your viewers that kind of agrees with me. I was at an enduro bike race in Ohio this past weekend, and there was a guy there who was driving to the race from Pennsylvania, and his twin turbo on his Tundra blew up with only 15,000 miles on it. Next time I see him, I'll find out what their cause was, if he knows, and let you know. A Toyota Tundra engine blew up with 15,000 miles on it. I mean, the old V8s, I've seen them with 500,000, and they've never been touched. Still original engine, just changed the oil regulator right? You get a twin turbo. You put it on a V6. You're towing stuff. He's going to an enduro race, so he's got a trailer pulling stuff. They're not made for that.
I don't care what anybody says. The V8s are made for towing and pulling. That's just the way that it goes. And here's a hilarious thing. One of my friends here runs a taco stand business, towing stuff around, right? And he's got the new twin turbo, and he's so disappointed because he's getting such horrible gas mileage. He's only getting tops of about 13 miles a gallon. It's rated at 19 and 24, and the best he can get, best, isn't 24, it's 13. He's a hard driver, but hey, I mean, that's what trucks are made for, right? It just shows that this fantasy that you put a smaller engine twin turbo you're gonna get better gas mods no he's not you don't really get that much better gas mods it was a gigantic mistake could you imagine if you bought one and the engine blew up at 15,000 miles I would be furious I would just want to explode clean bean says 96 Corvette has limp mode on and it won't shift in the third gear it's got a 4160e automatic and it won't shift in the third gear I change the shift solenoids filter and fluid and it won't shift it just starts revving up help well you're gonna have to rebuild the transmission it's shot that's just the way that it goes you tried the obvious things when they start to just rev and slip they're worn out inside you know you get low on fluid it can but you change the filter and fluid it just flat wore out you know that's what happens to it you don't see how many miles the thing has on it they're like any GM transmission the weakest part of all GM vehicles vehicles these days are the automatic transmissions and yours is no exception it, obviously the transmission's going off you step on a gas and it just revs up and you changed all the shifts on all its filter and everything and you got the right amount of fluid you got to take it apart and have it rebuilt it's just flat wearing out because it slips it's just worn internally something's wrong especially in third won't go into third gear there's obviously something wrong with third gear you're just going to either have to get it rebuilt or buy a remanufactured transmission for it say let said what's the best glue sealer I got a 2000 2015 Nissan Altima and what's the best glue sealer for the outside of the oil pan well there is none oil pans have a gasket or they're glued on most of them are glued on when it wears out the oil is leaking from inside to the outside of the pan drips on the ground you cannot seal it from the outside you have to drop the pan clean all the crap off and if you want to not buy a gasket you can buy a gasket that's the best thing it may not have been built with one but there's replacement gaskets that generally are going to last longer than glue but if you don't want to buy a gasket you can get permatex the right stuff it's a gasket sealer it makes gaskets use that and bolt it on that's great stuff too but it actually costs more than a gasket does expensive stuff so get a gasket put it on that's the only way you can fix it you can't put glue on the outside it'll just won't stick it's all oil and it's leaking you can't do that you got to take it apart if it's leaking you can't fix it with a sealer on an oil pan that won't work and no sealers you put in the oil will work on that either you got to take the pan off it's not that bad just a bunch of bolts it's messy but you drain the oil first and it's not messy clean it off put a new gasket or a new sealer and bolt it on the way you go I'm laughing my butt off because Domino's has in some locations electric delivery vehicles with the domino wrap stickers all over it right and they're saying oh we're it's attracting new drivers they want to drive these on what a loan of baloney here's a bunch of PR crap that only a fool would fall for look they don't pay the drivers that much money right oh all of a sudden people aren't getting paid much or happy because they're driving a plastic wrapped electric car come off it you know and they don't talk about that in the media oh all they're getting the drivers are all just clamoring to get in to drive the electric car. what a load of baloney it is all hype and they're saying well it's green so people ordering pizza will say what a good idea I'll order with the electric car delivery blah 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 a bunch of PR nonsense and what are the EVs they're Chevy bolts remember the ones they had to recall because all the batteries were blowing up and stuff let's see what happens when they start falling apart being GM products will the pizza lovers of America be happy that pizza didn't make it because broke down and oh you know, they didn't charge it up right now you can't get your pizza delivered I always love this fantasy they're trying to pretend oh Hertz is doing great with all the Teslas no they aren't I've been in places like Boston and they got Tesla EVs just sitting there nobody's renting them you see are they renting them no people try renting them they say that was a pain in the butt I'm not going to rent another electric car and they got a bunch of them sitting around nobody's renting them so don't listen to the PR baloney that these people oh oh we're getting hiring many new people because they just love to drive these electric vehicles at mainly minimum wage probably you know it's just nonsense that they try to throw out at people you know total nonsense and here's some more nonsense and they're doing it with Chevy electric vehicles you know those things are going to break down right <laughs> then what's going to happen to your pizza it's going to be ice cold might come a few weeks too late <laughs>
<laughs> now, here's a headline I can't resist. It's so hilarious. Scottish self-driving bus only needs two humans to operate. Now, wait a second. It said it's a self-driving bus. Why does it need two humans to operate it then? Isn't that kind of oxymoronic? <laughs> self-driving bus only needs two humans to operate. What the heck? And the two humans that operate is there are the guy behind the steering wheel and the guy collecting tickets, right? This is in Scotland. Now, of course, they're not going to let them drive themselves yet, so there's got to be a driver behind the wheel anyway, and then a guy to take tickets. So really, when I read this, this is like one of those Jay Leno headlines. Scottish self-driving bus only needs two people to operate it. Well, then how can you call it a self-driving bus? And the funny thing, this is just a 14-mile trip that goes back and forth the same way. They got to try them out on simple routes, right? But they still got to have a driver behind the wheel for safety reasons. Self-driving bus only needs two people to drive it, where a regular bus only needs one person to drive it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, it goes on and on. I can't help but laugh at the insanity that people come up with these days. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.